Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft DevBox. DevBox allows you to create workstations in the cloud that are pre-configured with the software, the tools, and the services that are required for a given application or a project. So by creating a, a DevBox and advanced developers on your team can quickly become productive, and they can also quickly switch between different projects that require different environments. In this video, I'm going to focus on the steps that an administrator should take to enable the creation and maintenance of dev boxes. Here are the steps right here. First, I'm going to create a dev center, then I'll create a project, I'll create a dev box definition, a dev box pool, then I'll set access control to that pool. The first thing we need to do is to navigate to the Azure portal right here, log in, and then um, search for Microsoft Dev Box, this section right here. Okay, and then the very first thing I want to do in this section is to create a dev center. And you can see on the left menu here, there is configured dev centers right here. I've got a couple of them already, but I'm going to click on create right here. And this is the dialog that pops up. I select the subscription in which I want to store it. I'll select the resource group, or in this case, I'm going to create a brand new resource group. I'll call it GCast DevBox RG. Okay. And then uh, I'll give this dev center a name, GCast DevBox Dev Center. I'll put it in East US. Um, and let's check this here. I understand the quick call. I'm going to skip on that. This allows me to uh, the developers to modify that dev box. So I'll leave that unchecked and I'll just click on review and create. It just checks some validation, make sure I have all the required fields and nothing inconsistent. And then I'll click create right here. And this will go out and it'll create a dev center for my dev box, which can take uh, it ran, took 10 to 15 minutes last time I ran this, so I'm going to pause the video and return when it is finished. We are back, and Azure has completed creating our dev center, so the next step is to create a project. And I can do that here. Let me go to resource. Now, here I am in the dev center, and you see down here where it says manage projects. That's what I want right here. And currently I don't have any projects in this dev center. So I'm going to click on this create button right here to create one. And it brings up this dialog and I can select a resource group. In this case, I'll use the same resource group that I was using before. Uh, I'll select the uh, dev center that I just created right there. And then I'll give a name to the project. I'm going to call it Gcast Dev box project right here. And I could give a description, um, but that's not required. Um, I also, if I go click the next button, you see there are tabs at the top here. One of them is enable dev box limits. If I say yes here, then I can limit the number of developers who can simultaneously access this dev box. Maybe I want to do that for cost reasons, for practical reasons. I'm going to say no for right now. Um, tags. This is just, this doesn't really do anything other than um, apply a, a name value pair so you can do sorting and filtering on your reports. But when I go to the review and create tab, it'll make sure that everything is consistent. I haven't missed any required fields or have anything that is incompatible answers. Uh, and I can click on create right here. And it'll take a few minutes to create a project. Uh, last time I ran this, it took about five minutes for the project. Uh, this time, by the way, the Dev Center took 12 minutes for it to create. So I'll pause the video now and I'll come back when this project is created. We're back and it took less than five minutes for that project to be created. So I'm going to click on go to resource right here. Here I can see the project. And if you remember, the next step is going to be that I'm going to create a dev box definition. That'll say the kinds of uh, software, services, applications that'll be on this workstation. I need to start this at the Dev Center blade again. And here in my project, actually, there's a link to the Dev Center right here. So here's my Dev Center. I'm on the overview, overview blade right now. But in order to create a dev box, what I need to do is come down to under dev box configuration, select dev box definitions right here. I don't have any, so I'm going to click on this create button to create 
a dev box definition and I'll give it a name. I'll call it gcast dev box definition. How about that? For the image, you see I've got lots of images here with various versions of Windows, versions of Visual Studio. Um, there is a way of actually creating your own custom image template like this, but um, I'll defer that for another video. Uh, I want to specify, I'll just pick the first one here, Visual Studio 2022 on Windows 11 and all the enterprise versions. The version, I can either pick version one of that, this, that's the only one there is, or I can say latest, so I always get the most recent one. Uh, here I have some options on how powerful a machine I want. So the more powerful, the more CPUs, the more RAM, the more I'm going to pay per hour that this uh, workstation is running. I'll just pick the cheapest one right here, eight virtual CPUs, 32 gigabytes RAM. Same thing with storage. If I need a lot of storage, I can add that, but I'll pay more for that. So I'm just going to do this, the 256. Notice it is an SSD, so it should be very fast storage. And then, and then I like to check enable hibernation so that uh, I can save money that after inactivity, it'll shut down everything. All right, I'll click on create right here, and that launches the creation process. And once again, I'm going to pause the video and wait. Last time this was two or three minutes. We'll see how long it takes this time until this uh, dev box definition is completed. We are back. Our dev box definition is done. It's It was created pr properly. And um, just take a few, took a few minutes for that. Uh, so our next step is to create a dev box pool. And to do that, we want to go back into our project. Right here. And you see right down here under manage, we have dev box pool. Let's select that to bring up this blade right here. We don't yet have any dev box pools in this project, so we'll click on create. And here we'll give this pool a name. We're going to call it gcast dev box pool. We're going to select the dev box definition, the one that we just created. We're going to specify uh, here. You can have it, most of the time it makes sense to deploy to a Microsoft hosted network. You might just put your own network if you wanted some specific configuration to that network. Uh, then you have that option to do that here, but I'm going to leave it as the default here. Um, we can enable single sign on. I will check that right now. Uh, what kind of privileges do we have? Uh, I do like to check auto stop and this again it's a cost saving measure so this pool if it's if it's, nobody's using it at seven o'clock p.m u.s central time then it's going to automatically shut down to save me money and then finally this box right here licensing i'm going to create a workstation that has things like windows and visual studio installed on it it's asking me do i own the applicable license for those things i'll click on create and that will kick off the creation of this dev box pool and last time I ran this, this took about seven minutes, so I'll pause the video again and come back when it's done. A few minutes have passed, and this uh, dev box pool is now complete. It's been created. Uh, so now we're ready. If we wanted to create a new dev box, we could do so based on that definition, uh, but we probably want to give other people permission to do that. And the way we enable that is by going up here underneath project to the access control IAM tab and right here you can check to see what access I have right now logged in I've got lots of access here the accesses are all they're all going to be under dev center though the word dev center will be in them so what I want to do is I'm going to add another access here add a role assignment like this and then I'll search for dev center and you notice there are two key roles one is the dev box user and one is the dev center project admin so if i just want to let people create new dev boxes based on the definition that's this is the one that i want to give them if i want somebody else to take over where i'm going on vacation this might be a good one right here they, they both essentially work the same way i'll select this right here i'll click you notice i'm on the role tab right now i click next that takes me to the members tab well, there are no members of this yet so i'll click select members and this happens to be a brand new subscription so there aren't a lot of there aren't any uh users that i've added here but here's the system administrator right here and i can click on select and add the system administrator to this dev box user role and click on review and assign And then review and assign again. 
And that didn't take any time at all. In one second, I now have added that user to that role. So that user can now create a dev box in this dev box center. Now that we have everything configured, we can create our own dev box. I'll go open up a new tab and I'll navigate to devbox.microsoft.com. You can see currently I'll have a, currently I have no dev boxes created, but I can click on this big blue button or this one down here, either one, say new dev box, and I'll give it a name. I'll just call this one Gcast Dev Box. That's fine. I I want uh, this project right here, the one that I just created a little while ago, and it does remind me that the Hibernate option that I selected is in preview, so it's possible there are going to be issues at it, on it. Um, I haven't enabled customization, so that's about it. And it does have a warning also here. Dubbox creation takes 25 minutes on average, but it can take up to 65 minutes, and we'll email you once your dev box is ready. I'll click on Create, and then I'll go have lunch, because this is going to take a while. I'll pause the recording right now, and we'll come back after lunch. About a half an hour has passed since we clicked this new dev box button and you can see that here's my dev box it's up and it's running and i've got two options here i can either open in the rdp client or i can open in the browser simplest one is just to open in the browser i don't really need anything special to do that so i'll do that here it asks me what do i want to do do i want to be able to share printers transfer files share my microphone there's some local resources that's asking me for access to i'm going to say yes to all those things here it'll connect to it if if it hasn't yet started then it'll ask me to start this um, it's now asking me for a password because i didn't do single sign-on so i need to find my password there it is and i'll sign in and configure and i can save my password here so it won't ask me a second time and then it'll log in and i'll see the desktop after I've successfully logged into this. That took a few minutes, maybe three or four minutes, and so I did speed that up a little bit. But now you can see we're remotely logged into this workstation here. We've got tools like Visual Studio installed, PowerShell installed, and so on, things that we can up, get up and running to use our development environment. I'm going to close this because I want to also show you another way to connect. And that is instead of going in the browser, open in the RDP client. If I click on this, if I don't have the RDP client, then I want to click on that to install it. And uh, there's some things about configuration, but really all I need to do, as long as I have this installed, I should be able to click on that and launch the RDP client. And it's launched, it's asking me for a password. I'll say, remember me, okay. And in here now I'm launching the same thing. This took a lot less time because the, the machine had already started up and had already been logged on at least once to the, my profile was set up. But here I have the same information, but using the RDP rich desktop client instead of going inside of the browser. So if you have this client, I recommend that you use it, but if you're borrowing someone else's machine, you need to get in. The browser works well as well. In this video, I've shown you how to configure Microsoft DevBox as an administrator to set things up and enable your users to start creating their own DevBoxes. And now I have shown you how a user can create a DevBox. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.